Welcome everyone. This is Marie Waite and I am here with uh, Ellen Cook, who is an amazing videographer in the Temecula Valley. Hi, Ellen. How are you doing? Hi, Marie. I'm doing great today. Thank you. Good, good. So, so I have been interviewing people uh, and uh, trying to get some information for them on how uh, we can help them with whatever they need for their business. So I thought I uh, invite you to be our guest today. And uh, I want to start by uh, just asking you, Alan, in terms of your background, can you give us some information on how it all started for you? Well, um, too many years ago that I care to remember, what, uh, 45 years ago? Yes. I, there about, <laughs> I graduated from um, uh, college in Pasadena Arts Center College of Design with a degree in film production. Went in as a commercial photographer, did that for a couple semesters, and became fascinated with film. So I switched majors and uh, continued on and um, graduated with a degree in film production. Um, sadly, the, uh, the market that time for new film you know, people were, was, uh, was pretty impacted. The government, rightly so, uh, frankly, had gotten rid of all the tax shelter status of all these independent feature films. That you know, we're going out. People shoot on 16 millimeter. You know, they call the B grade movies. Well, you know, 70 percent of Hollywood was unemployed. So I actually went back and doing commercial photography. And then over the next about 10 years, I transitioned from commercial photography to video production as the cost of video equipment became affordable. As a commercial okay. photographer, I was used to uh, having my own studio, my own equipment. This renting gear out of San Diego, L.A., you know, it was just not working for me. Okay. But uh, then, then eventually, I just transitioned all completely to video production, early 2000s, and gave up I the see. commercial photography. So have you, uh, were you always in Temecula? No, I was um, for many years until um, I was about 29 or 30, I was in Escondido, born and okay. raised in Escondido, just down the road, obviously. But then uh, my wife and I moved up here in I think 86 when in order to buy a house here you had to look at a plan because they hadn't built the uh, hadn't built the, uh, the models yet okay it's just all land <laughs> it was, it was all vacant land Some, sometimes not even graded you look at where your house is going to be it's like somewhere over there that's not the case anymore in Temecula right <laughs> no no we're, we're, we're uh, getting very close to being built out okay so um so how long uh, in total with the video production? Well, I mean, I think in video production, um, at least 30 years. 30 years. Wow. 30 years That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, in, just in video. It doesn't include the film stuff I used to shoot, but 30 years in video. And you have an office in Temecula. Yeah, I have a studio here in Temecula. Okay. In the it's an industrial. It's in, you know it's a, a lot of your folks I'm sure will be familiar with it. It's a dual okay. use. You know offices up front and studio or storage area in the back. Okay. So what kind of video production do you do? Because there's so many videographers and they all specialize in all kinds of different things. And I know that because I've worked with so many videographers. So what is your specialty? Um, our specialty really is. Um, economic development, workforce development, um, workforce education. You know, primarily our customers are public agencies, uh, school districts, county school districts, sometimes individual school districts, uh, particularly in the area of STEM and, and workforce, um, workforce development. Um, most of the videos that we've done recently in the area of education has been trying to convince college, uh, high school kids who don't think they want to do a four-year college to get into a local community college, um, go through one of the, the um, what we used to call blue-collar trades, and you know sign up to learn how to be you know um, someone who's an experienced technician in um, you know laser and photonics or you know water or one of the other many certifications you get at a you know at, at a community college because that's where the money is now in in for industry. Many of uh, people who are currently keeping our water systems, sewer systems, power systems, um, you know, all the technical infrastructure that we depend on, um, they're all retiring. 
and they don't have enough people to replace them. So if you've okay. got a student uh, who's interested in, um, you know, finding a career, not just a job, but a, a well-paying career with lots of upward mobility, you know, talk to your local community college people. They have to line on the jobs there. Okay. So um, it's interesting that uh, you have a specialized target market um, in this um, with with the uh, situation right now being locked down, how does that affect you? Well, sadly, we're pretty much dead in the water. Um, okay. the clients that we work for the school districts, we've got a couple school school district projects that we've got going in the, for the one for the county of San Bernardino, the entire county, and one for um, Victor Valley, um, or rather Victorville Unified High School District. And um, because there's no students, we can't shoot any B-roll. So we've got interviews in the can, but not, no way to, to finish and build them out. Um, starting another couple of months, we'll be starting on a big, heavy project for hopefully the County of San Bernardino and economic development. But they're all now working from home. There's no one at the office at the county businesses. So we're pretty much, you know, dead in the water, which is difficult. We are moving ahead with a lot of proposals. There's a lot of our clients, particularly education, know that there will be a time after the COVID-19. And okay. still, particularly when it comes to budgeting, right now we're working on a proposal that's really going to be for the upcoming budget in, uh, in July for the 2020-2021 school year. Okay, so you're not doing any kind of online um, events or video production? Uh, are you talking about streaming events, that kind of thing? Yes, live um, streaming. No, or... actually not as a company, but I am through my church. And okay. we've had that capability for many years. We've, um, and we've been doing, I think, Reality Valley for 10 years, um, streaming live from Temecula okay. here in May. But that event's been canceled for this year because of the COVID situation. Um, but we've got a fair amount of experience with streaming um, through my church. And there's a lot of opportunity there with some of the new vendors. The new technology has allowed a lot of great things to happen. You know, for me, uh, if we're getting our church online, um, uh -huh. part of the streaming issue is that the typical streaming uh, software you can get for free or for very little allows you to stream like just, for example, free, right? You can go live right to YouTube. That, that's okay. Free. But it's not Facebook. It's not, you know, Periscope. It's not direct to your website. It's only to YouTube. Um, okay. We're using a new platform called Boxcast that, you know, part of your, quote, you know, membership of that. Um, you know, they give you the streaming mm -hmm. appliance that they handle all the distribution. Mm -hmm. So you send the, um, the, uh, the feed to them and they sp spread it throughout wherever you want to go in the entire, you know, web universe. Okay. So, so, uh, you've never used zoom in any of your, uh, video production. No, we, we, we meet regularly with our clients via zoom. Or in the case of the government clients, um, okay. using a different system because they, they're not Zoom's not approved uh, because of the security issues Zoom has had. Okay. Um, obviously, not relevant to us or what we're doing. But you know, if you're a government, you know that stuff's relevant. I see. Um, so, but no, we haven't. Uh, now, if for my ham radio club that I'm the president of, we're conducting all our meetings via Zoom now. And for people who can't make it, we do the recording and then we publish that later on our website. So I see. But that's something that, um, you know, we're not doing as a company, but I can certainly have done a lot of it recently mm -hmm. through things. And I think it's great to be able to, uh, you know, get through this and, you know, you and I can talk right now face to face and, um, you know, yes. you're going to share this with lots of other people. And the Zoom meetings, I think, are, are fantastic. And for what we pay, I think, for our club, we pay like 12 bucks a month. And yes, our meetings, it's our meetings almost nothing. Yeah, and the maximum meeting length is 24 hours because then you go to a different day. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and the streaming that we use for live for our church stuff is through Boxcast. And yes, I'm not getting 120 bucks a month, but we can reach so many people that way. Okay. It's very affordable. The, the, the key is, is that what they call the CDN for streaming, the content delivery networks. That's where the, the, the problem has always been. Anybody can stream stuff from their phone or whatever, but if you want to really spread it out, it's got to go someplace first. And until recently, um, those some places, content delivery networks, could be very expensive, a thousand bucks a month. I did some um, 
work with a company that uh, he was paying about 1500 bucks a month to have that pipeline right to the content delivery network to keep it stable. But now with a good wired internet connection, you can send up stuff up to BoxCast for very inexpensive and you can you know, reach multiple platforms simultaneously, which I think is important. Okay. Well, you do have, uh, I remember stopping by at your office and mm-hmm. you, you pretty have a, a fairly good size of an office there because you have different rooms for uh, right. different functionality. Um, so do you still have the same uh, square footage and are you uh, utilizing some of the spaces you have? Well, not so much. I, about three or four years ago, I uh, moved um, offices from really okay. across the parking lot from a 2,500 square foot facility to a 1,500 square foot facility. Okay. Mostly because a lot of my folks are working remotely. Uh, Noah, one of my key producers, lives in Anaheim. Oh. I don't know. I don't know when I last saw him here. You know, yeah. in the office. If we got a shoot, we'll pick him up in uh, you know somewhere in San Bernardino County, Riverside County and go north from there, or I mean actually on location. But, um, or he'll, he'll come into town for shooting, well, we're not really shooting locally here too much anymore. But, um, you know, we'll meet up. And then, um, you know, Lindsay and Rachel, um, you know, they both work remotely when they can. So even though I have really three, like really four editing suites. Okay. Only one, if, when we're really busy, we'll have maybe two of them at, here at the office working simultaneously. When my clients are here, because we can work, you know, um, uh, we can we can share data, you know, and we can share screens. Okay. Um, but for the most part, you know, I might have, you know, this, in the last round we did for state of the county for the San Bernardino County, we had we were working in our main main 4K room. Um, someone was working in our uh, second 4K bay, and Noah was working in Anaheim. I see. Okay. And we were all talking constantly. Okay. So, so what's great for us is a smaller space, um, as far as office space, uh, what do I got? I think I've got about a thousand or so square, maybe 900 square feet of office space is now more than enough. Okay. Because I, I don't, see. I can fill up if I need to, but distributed uh, uh, with a server and distributed workflow, it's much better than Noah stays in, you know, in uh, Anaheim all day. Yeah. And wear his bunny slippers and, mm-hmm. you know, his bathrobe. Mm-hmm. You can work away. Okay. Well, um, you've been in the industry for so long that I'm uh, curious what your prediction or what you think about our situation right now. Do you think there's some good things to look to look forward to? And for the people that are in the uh, production industry, what can you also share with them in terms of, you know, our situation? I know you're going to ask me this question. I've been thinking about it for a week. You know, <laughs> honestly, it's there's. I don't know if any of us see the way. This is entirely a unique situation. Okay. So you've got a lot of questions there. I don't know how um, my business is going to is going to come out. You know, of this in you know two or three months. It all depends if my government clients have any money, because okay. sometimes production stuff that they they cut. Um, But then again, their need is going to be greater than ever for messaging, particularly getting the workforce back in shape. You know, we're uh, we're budgeting a uh, or uh, together proposal to do the second phase of our online soft skills program that we produced about 10 years ago. There's been huge interest recently. And even with this COVID thing, um, the powers that be are looking back and said, you know, we've got to we've got to give people better skill sets. They're getting good stuff. They're getting good um, training at our. Um, you know, our colleges, you know, in the technical skills, yeah. but they still need the soft skills. And every time we've sat on a panel, uh, my producer, Ron and I, um, and talked about uh, soft skill training, um, nobody else wants to talk about anything else. They want to talk about video. They don't want to talk anything except horror stories about, I hired this great person who had a great programmer, but I took him out and met lunch with the clients and they're completely embarrassed. Me. You know, they're just, the soft skills that they have aren't ready for today's industry. So um, anyway, I don't want you to go down that. I'll, I'll talk about soft skills for hours. But <laughs> as far as, you know, what, what's it look for? Unfortunately, in the, or fortunately, the last couple of years, production in the entertainment industry, which we're not part of, right? But okay. it assumes a, a huge amount of, of, of workers has been growing like crazy. You know, Netflix is now the largest production company in the world. 
you know, and, you know, Amazon and Apple, and everybody wants to be in the same boat. I mean, everybody is doing more production. My son works in, um, in audio post-production in Burbank, and okay. all, their, all their clients are um, animators, Nickelodeon, Disney, and they're, they're quite busy. They're to work from home as well um, because they can't all gather in their production studios. But the animation is, 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 you know, kicking over and they're still, you know, late, they're still, um, you know, producing shows, okay. but, but the regular industry, the live action people, mm -hmm. they're, they're really suffering. It's all just shut down in California and most other places because you, it takes a big crew to do something and, you know, six feet and, and, uh, you know, a mask isn't going to do it, you know, when you're doing a television series. Um, that said, the one big thing is people have been, you know, binge watching Netflix and HBO and Amazon Prime and whatever they can over the last six, eight weeks. That's well, correct. They're going to watch about everything they can stand to watch. I mean, I, you know, I'm watching, you know, I'm watching uh, Plaza Towing on YouTube because it's <laughs> fascinating to watch these guys, you know, bring out those big trucks and, you know, and, and uh, you know, and uh, take care of these big semis that have crashed out in the desert, you know. Um, and we're, we're getting the bottom of the barrel here. So I think as, as the industry loosens up, there's going to be a huge backlog. So for okay. people who want to get into the entertainment side, it's going to be, it's going to be real good. On the end for workforce development, I'm hoping, praying that we'll be back to normal pretty soon and we'll keep going on because that stuff doesn't change. You know, the, okay. and, the, and the companies still want, want that. Yeah, um, I remember you mentioned to me way back to where, it is uh, very important for people to consider online courses, online training. And that's where really where need, uh, people need to, uh, you know, put together their programs. And have you ever thought about, um, I mean, do you even have an online training for what you do to where people can probably take the time of learning that right now since they are at home and not doing anything else do you think that will be a good good thing to do not for me though i have um rachel who's, who's one of my uh shooters and editors um uh -huh. she is building she's building her skill set she's learning a little bit about uh alternative delivery uh, okay. uh content formats um a little bit in the streaming area also how we might be able to utilize um some of the stuff that we do in a game format she's learning some game programming so okay. um, our soft skills program that we're um, enlarging and recoding to HTML5 has got a lot of built-in games. So we want to be able to learn to do that and customize that stuff as much as possible. Okay. So I, I think there's, there's, um, you know, there's, there's, there's opportunity everywhere, right? I mean, that's, that's obvious, but it's, it's looking, you've got to kind of look at the landscape and say, where do I think this is going? What skill sets do I need to, bone up on so I can, you know, hit the ground running in a, another month and a half, you know, maybe at the, hopefully no longer than a month or even six weeks or, excuse me, um, two or three weeks. But once things start to open up, I think things are going to start the wheels, the demand's going to be there. We got to be prepared to do it. So I don't think, I don't know anybody who's just lying around, you know, not, you know, not honing their skills. You know, I'm stripping all my gear, um, repairing it, making sure that if I've got, you know, if I get a call tomorrow for a job in two weeks, I can do a load out with everything in perfect condition. Okay. You know? Well, can, can we uh, get back to the topic of gaming? Because, you know, I've heard people, other business connections, I, you know, I know that they've used that as part of their uh, business um, uh, communication where they incorporated gaming in, into their system. Is that what you're talking about when you say gaming? No, um, the gaming that I'm specifically referring to is in our soft skills uh, program, our online program. We okay. have we, ten years ago, we we had to hand code. We built our own computer, uh, the, our games that the people going through the program would get. We kind of a little break from listening to people and doing the reenactments, you know, and you know, focusing. It allowed them to play some word games, that kind of thing. Oh, well, I see. Right, and that's so. Now we're the new versions are going to incorporate some more advanced games to keep people's attention. You know, the first, the, the first three modules we did, you know, if, if you were attentive and went through it, you know, it took you about three hours and we're getting ready for another three modules. It'll take about, 
you know, six hours to get through all six modules, maybe seven right. hours. And that's okay. not going to do it at one, at one sitting. So, no, we're not incorporating gaming, anything that we're doing. Um, though Rachel's been looking into that as how we might, you know, help that industry. Because, fr frankly, gaming and, um, and um, so, I'm sorry, computer games and um, uh, streaming content are the growth industries, you know, in media today. You know, when, okay. when, my son graduated a couple of years ago from college. He did a lot of research and he said, hey, there's, there's no more. I'd like to be a studio musician or a studio recording engineer for classical music. But there's one studio in the L.A. area and they're, you know, they're not very busy. Um, but so, looked at, you know, where, where can I take my skill set? And he took it to, you know, the Blue Box Post where he works, has worked since uh, college um, and doing um, audio for um you know television shows and they're starting to look into a little bit into doing audio post-production for games because already video games or online games um are a much larger market segment than video is or films or movies okay by, I see. by far the more people are gaming online you know or playing games online then uh, they are they're spending more money doing that than they are out buying movies i see Huh, that's interesting. Um, and I'm trying, and my mind is trying to think about how that can cross cross over to how you can also promote your business. And I'm just trying to figure out how you can combine those two. Well, I don't, you know, I've thought about that a little bit, but um, you know, that's uh, for us, it's kind of out of our area. Actually, I'm not sure I want to go and, and move to explore a lot of that, put a lot of assets into, you know, doing games. Um, you know, though it is interesting, um, and we may do more of that when we get the soft skills going on, but, okay. that, but, but what is, it, can, can we talk about the soft skills even sure. just for, if you, you don't mind, I'm just curious what that is. Um, my accountant years ago said soft skills is what your mother should have taught you when you were in first grade. Okay. okay. Every, every, everybody has soft skills, interpersonal skills, right? The problem is at what level are those soft skills, you know, designed for with the advent of the push to getting pe more people to go to college, right? Yeah. I mean, my first, I had my first real job that wasn't paper boy, though that was a real job when you're, you know, 11. That's a pretty real job, you know, and then, you know, doing, you know, yard work for the neighbors and grove work and picking fruit and stuff. And when I, when I, just a couple of days after I turned 15 in a retail store, um, I didn't know anything about selling. Well, I knew a little about selling, but I didn't know how to behave. But when I worked in the retail store, the people around me trained me how to do that job, how to become a better salesperson, you know, blah, blah, blah. People expect that. So when I walk into a store and I meet someone who's 16 or 70, if even that's even possible, and they're just learning how to use the cash register, you know, it's kind of fun. So remember, I, I was there once, right? The problem today is that with a push for higher education, um, you know, getting to quote the best colleges, is that the first job, you know, the first job that someone might be um, looking for, um, they might be 22 or 23 or 24 years old. And at that age, business owners expect you to be able to conduct yourself in a business-like manner. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I remember now because yeah, I, when I was working for the hospital, they had those videos where we have to watch it and understand that the type of, um, acceptable behavior right for a given situation sure okay yeah exactly and um you know in our soft skills programs we have a lot of you know each, each scenario is you know a situation goes bad right yeah you know, what, what's the problem here then we have uh s uh speech um um you know experts come in and talk about um you know no why this is wrong you know and then what's the likely outcome we did a whole module on gossip and, you know, it, it really comes down to, you know, two, two, in this case, two gals, you know, fussing about behavior of each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they went in to meet with their boss and each one thought that I'm going to prove my case and get this other gal fired. You know, the short of the story oh. was that they both walked out without a job. I see what you're saying. Right. So it's, it's really, um, so I, I can see now why your target market are mostly in the educational institution because of that. 
it makes sense to me now. For, for, for soft skills. Yeah. The other, art, the other ed, uh, target that we have in education is promoting the different programs that these colleges have. We did a couple years ago um, a video for Irvine Valley College mm -hmm. in laser and photonics. It's kind of a new department, but a kid could go in there at 18, do their two years in junior college, get, get four different certifications, and at 20 years old, walk out and walk into a $65,000 a year job, which is not a great you know, job uh, when you're in Irvine, right? The high red district. But for someone who's 20 years old, $65,000, and that's just the bottom. Because okay. each one of those companies will, will take those you know, folks with a two-year education, and if they want to, they'll run them through an engineering program at okay. UC Dodd because well, they I, I, need those people so bad. Yeah, I'm thinking with the COVID-19, I'm sure there's going to be some changes on how soft skills will be <laughs> will be uh, implemented because of all the things that are happening. I mean, just think about it, you know, before the uh, normal uh, acceptable behavior is you, you shake hands. So right. <laughs> now, well, what will be the acceptable soft skills for that? Well, maybe to the elbow bump or the fist bump or something, but mostly, yes. you know, mostly it's going to be, you know, like the elbow bump or whatever it is. But, but soft skills, not just how you behave, you know, uh, superficially, it's really about ethics and morals. Okay. And, and thinking along with other, with other people, you know, much, much more crucial stuff, but you know, everybody has soft skills and these, these, you know, college students graduating for the first time in the workforce, the business owners saying, you know, they're qualified technically. Right. But they don't know that they, you know, they're fresh out of the fraternity and for lack of a better term, you know, they, they got away with dipping uh, Becky's pigtails into the inkwell when they were in college. Uh -huh. But, you know, in the work environment, that sexual harassment gets you fired immediately. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and that's what they don't understand is that what, what they get away with in college, you know, an acceptable college behavior, like showing up late for class, right? Uh -huh. Hey, most professors don't care at all. You're late. Hey, it's your money, you know, not my problem, right? Well, so you'd bring that to the workforce consistently late, you know, or just take days off and just don't show up. That's a real problem. I see. And it was, it wasn't so much of a problem uh, when the economy after 2008, you know, was in the tank because they could, you know, they could, they could find other people. Right. But for business owners, when there's a shortage of good workers, right, they're having to, you know, accept people who they wouldn't normally want to hire, but they just need the bodies. Yes. So well, especially saying, well, now, trained. yeah, especially now that a lot of students are just um, staying at home, and so they don't even have, uh, they're not going to have a lot of human interaction or face-to-face -face interaction because they have to stay at home. So they're going to be more uh, uneducated about this whole thing. Uh, so I think what you're offering is going to reach out to all of those people and educate them more about it once we open up the business and. I mean, even in the future, even if, um, you know, regardless of the COVID-19, I mean, people still need to learn all of those skills. Yeah, it's the skills that you used to learn at home yeah. or you learned, you know, I learned when I was 15 working in a retail store. No one expected a 15-year-old to know everything. And, you know, when I bumbled around or didn't, you know, deal with people quite mm -hmm. correctly, I got a lot of, you know, a lot of leeway. What about, but, what about the soft skills uh, dealing with different culture? Uh, for example, if you are going to another country like China or Japan, is there some sort of a, a soft skills that is also good for people to learn? Well, I think it's always good to to learn, you know, proper business behavior in the your um, your host country, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Makes people feel, I think, more comfortable that you're trying, you know, to to understand their culture. You know, okay. even if it's just a matter of presenting a business card, you know, in Korea or China, you know, the two hands and how you, how you properly do that. Yes. That, that goes a long, a long way. Okay. Um, I don't know that people will criticize you for not doing it their way. I mean, people are pretty, you know, pretty sophisticated today. But the act of trying to fit in, I think, is, is really important. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, I would think more so. And there's, there's, there's companies that train people. I think if you're going to go over there for a long term, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, if you're going to spend up, you know, 
you're going to go to South Korea and be there for five years, you want to know a lot about the Korean culture because that's going to make you more effective as, you know, in, in, in integrating yourself within the people you're going to be working with because they won't be all Americans. They're going to be, you know, South Koreans. I see. So, um, you know, I think, that's, I think that's true no matter where you go, um, that you've got to, to work to, uh, you know, work hard to be, you know, to be part of what, what's going on there to fit in. I you see. Know, part, part of your difference may be, that may be part of the, your fact that you are different. I mean, the first time I went to India, you know, I was walking, you know, through this, you know, um, barrio, I guess it was a slum, it was a barrio, it was a slum of India, you know, like video camera doing interviews. And I kids surrounded by kids, you know, they're just jumping up and down. I couldn't believe it. I mean, and it was the greatest thing in the world to do. So sit down, you'd, I shoot a little bit of video and then I flip up the viewfinder and I show the kid, I just shot, you know, waving at the camera, I show them their picture. And yeah. they just love it. I think it's been an hour, you know, just shooting a little bit of B-roll, these kids, you know, jumping up and down and being kids, right? And then they get to see the black and white, the black and white image from my beta cam. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, that keep us, you know, I think we're more, con we're, we're more the same than we are, they are different. I'm even curious how you can also uh, use this soft skills videos for even, for example, real estate industry. Because there's certain behavior that the agents uh, need to really understand if they're getting into, you know, or taking care of their clients and trying to communicate with them. And if they're coming from different culture, it's good for them to know how to, to deal with that or how to communicate with them. So I think you have, I think the soft skills videos that you're talking about is going to be very, very useful for maybe real estate brokers that are training their agents. I think, well, I think it's, um, the soft skills, when we first produced, finished this program about nine, 10 years ago, since then, um, I think we've had, a, oh, out of the three modules um, and all the lessons, I, we've delivered about 160,000 lessons, chapters, wow. uh, to about uh, a total of probably close to 50,000 students between oh uh, the County of San Bernardino and um, some other installations that we did and one through Cal Poly Pomona. Mm -hmm. Last time we heard it was still, they, they made, Cal, made our soft skills program um, required for their agriculture and uh, hospitality degrees. And um, what they really needed is for their engineering program. But, you know, they were just testing it out. And I think it's still required. But um, this next generation will be converting the, the, our first three modules, actually reshooting them for, um, uh, for newer content. You know, we've got a couple of scenes in there where, where we refer to, you know, your, um, your Blackberry, right? Okay. Now we change that and refer to, and change the script to be your smartphone, your smart device. Oh. You know, so it's not, yeah. it's not dated. I say Blackberry to someone who's 20 years old or 25 years old. They say, what are you talking about? What's a Blackberry? You know? Um, okay. You know. So, so, anyway. so are you? But you're so, right. Let's say, um, so the uh, universities and the private schools, they are good to be connected to you because of that? I mean, is that your target market? I'm just My thinking this. I already have someone that I'm, I'm thinking of connecting with you. Because okay. of what we talked about. Yeah, I think we've, it's been successful in, in, in community colleges and universities. Okay. Um, the, the real successful in high schools. Oh. Um, so that's really was designed originally for high schools. But over the time, as we started creating this project, it became pretty obvious that the community college students needed it. And then we figured out that the four-year students needed it. Because you'd think that someone who's 22, or let's say, or let's say maybe 25, um, coming out of a four or five-year degree program okay. um, would have a lot of this stuff. They're adults. The, the sad you know, fact of the matter is they're not. You know? They're the ones that you know, go skiing instead of, you know, going to work, you okay. know, I didn't understand what the impact on that is. So yeah, for, I think for everybody, soft skills is really good. We didn't used to have this problem because we learned it young enough, but the, the educational um, pathway is different now. And, you know, the kids are learning, you know, they got kids learning in algebra in sixth grade. You know, I didn't get that till I was like in 10th grade. Right. Um, okay. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's a new world. And I think we, we do have to adapt. But definitely, um, our soft skills programs are designed for any working person. 
in any business. You know, our, our business partners range from manufacturing, you know, to high tech people, to offices. It's, it's all the same soft skills. Wow. And over all job sectors, the, the business owners and HR people are saying, we need help with soft skills. And we're, and we, we're writing our own content as did the first time. There's tons of soft skills stuff you can buy on DVD or do online. But the difference okay. with our project is that it's interactive. It requires you, when it, when it, it's, it's, there's, there's no grade, it's 100% pass. I mean, you have to answer every question correctly and then you go on to the next module. If ones you don't answer kicks you back in where the correct answer is explained and you can take the test again. So it's, it's kind of like a DMV. I mean, you got to go through the thing. Yeah. But it's 100%, you know, pass. Oh, that's but, awesome. But the well, big thing is at the end of that, when you're done with the program, you get certification. Okay. And you can show a prospective employer that I've gone through this soft skills program. They say, oh, yeah, we know about that. That's great. When can you start? Okay, cool. Wow. I mean, that it would be good to hear some testimonials from people that went uh, through the soft skills program that you have and let people know about it. Because I, I think, I'm sure that a lot of people are not aware of it to where they need to, you know, they need to see the value of taking that program, looking at the soft skills. Yeah, that's, that's right now it's, you know, we created it with a SB70 grant. And we own the copyright on the current material, and we own the okay. copyright on the on the new material that we're going to write. But then it's, we're going to it'll be it'll be co the but it will be co owned with in this case the Alliance for Education on the County of San Bernardino. Okay. Which the current thing is, and they're running it for San Bernardino County schools. Um, we did a separate install um, at uh, through another grant that somebody else got, but to try the soft skills program at Cal Poly Pomona. So that's, it's on their servers there. Um, it's, not, it's not a program at this time where you can go someplace and just run through it. But our goal is for the new version, because we were converting from Flash to HTML5, that it will be, it was always designed to be free for everybody to use. Okay. The students, that anybody go online because overall it, you know, it supports the entire workforce in the state and in the country. So you know, we, for a while, they were talking to WNET out of New York. They were very interested in funding, you know, a 12 module series and, and running with it, you know, on their end. But um, uh, some other stuff they felt was more important. So we didn't get funded for that. Okay. But um, so we're still, we're still kind of trying to get this away from being a county wide. And, you know, the, the new, my, our new partners um, in the new initiative will be both uh, County of San Bernardino and the County of Riverside. I see. And now, be, if, if, if people are, if they know people that, uh, that they can use this, or uh, if a business owner wants to learn more about it, how can they get hold of you, Alan? Um, they can reach me at my, at, on my uh, email at uh, alan at group1.tv, A-L-A-N at group one, that's G-R-O-U-P, number one, dot TV, or really best through you. Um, okay. But um, yeah, we'd be happy to talk with them about that, particularly the Riverside or San Bernardino County. Um, we definitely want to get as many business partners with us for this new initiative. It's, it's not an inexpensive thing to, to, to write and script and shoot and okay. do the coding for, you know, three, uh, six hours of interactive online media. Oh, so, that's exciting. Yeah, we'll have about probably 30 or 40 actors, you know, and lots of SME subject matter experts. Okay. So, well, I'm really curious about this. I, I, you know, I'm going to be thinking more about this and, and maybe talk to more people about it. I think it, there's, there's a lot of value. I can see the value um, that people oh, need to really look into this. It's huge value. If you'd like, I'll uh, get with you offline and I okay. will send you a link that that may allow you to um, to log in as a super user where you, you can look at the program. Okay. But it's already been, all the answers have been chosen. So you can just bang around and see what it's like. Oh, okay. That, that would be awesome. So I yeah. get the experience and uh, really right. understand that, how it works. Yeah. And that's, and that's the, um, I've got to check with uh, the, the Alliance for Education and the 
county superintendent of schools for Sevier County to make sure that they're still going to allow me to do that. Okay. Um, we've been kind of demonstrating it that way, but I don't think it should be a problem. All right. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alan. This is such a, an incredible uh, conversation we've had. I learned so much from you today. And I hope that we can schedule another time that we can talk about different topics. And I'm hoping that everything will go, uh, will go well for you in terms of the business. Uh, I'm hoping that this lockdown is going to be over. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm a people person. I kind of want to see people. But I'm good with the Zoom. You know, at least I'm able to talk to people. And, and I, haven't, I haven't talked to you for a while, too. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this is, this, this is great. I mean, in our, living on a ham radio club, having, you know, Zoom as a, as a way to meet. Um, yeah. Actually, when we go back to be able to meet in person once or twice a month, we're going to yeah. keep doing Zoom meetings. It's incredible. So, yeah, this is, Zoom is a game changer. No doubt okay. about that. All, All right. right. Sounds good, Alan. Well, thank you so much. Thank so, you. for everyone out there. Uh, please be sure to share this video. Alan Cook is an amazing videographer in town. So if you need to learn more or ask more uh, for more information, don't hesitate to get a hold of him, okay? But anyway, I want to sign up and have an amazing day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Marie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Alan.